And that's not America. And it's so sad that it's gotten this far. Well, I want to be clear. We're not saying that Miley Cyrus is bad. And I said that day one. I said she was being used. No, no, of course. Yeah, I'm agreeing with you. She just, she hasn't known. None of us know. It's very hard to find out. So the fact that she showed interest in this really made a big difference to so many little girls and to so many people. That is just, it was such a blessing. Have you gotten any feedback from her about uh, the cyberbullying now? I haven't, but I'm definitely going to talk to her about it. I want to talk to her in person about it, too. And well, the minute you do, please let us know, because I want to get you on and tell us what she said or get her on with you. That would be huge to have Miley Cyrus on here. But if the CIA airs, they're not going to contact her daddy, who's all mobbed up with the government. I mean, I'm sure he's a friendly person as well and probably try to stop her from coming on. But they definitely don't want the info war going to all those young girls. Stay there, uh, Heidi and Spencer. This is amazing information. Heidi is our guest, so is Spencer, Mr. and Mrs. Pratt, Heidi Montag, and Spencer Pratt here. And literally, I had no idea how, how big these guests are in the whole pop culture thing. The whole office knows who they are. Jaron's like a fan. He was telling me, I read People Magazine every week, and uh, you know, keep track of this, and I think they're misunderstood by the media. And that's what Burmas is saying, Jason, here in the office. He's saying that the media enjoys, quote, throwing you guys under the bus, can you explain that to me? Uh, because what I'm getting here from the office is, is you guys are all over TV, all over the news, covers of magazines. You know, when I started looking into you yesterday, I recognized your faces and names, even though I hadn't really been paying attention to pop culture. Because I've got to remember that pop culture is where it's all at. Most Americans don't even check the news, much less go deep into it. So, uh, what is your relationship with the media? Uh, we used to have a phenomenal relationship with the media. They've kind of turned on us now because they've created us into such a monstrous fame monster in their opinion that, like, we, like, for instance, certain websites can't even have us on their websites because we are overshadowing all the other stars that they're trying to promote and everything. Like, they made us too big. Like, they Obama-sized us, and now they kind of <laughs> made a mistake because there are other people that are trying to promote don't even have value on their websites anymore. So, you know, they've kind of turned on us. But in the beginning, the reason why we got so big is because the, the girls' television show, the reality show that we were both on, uh, this, the narrator didn't get along with us. So she's the, the narrator. So the, the skew, the manipulation of the angle of being able to narrate the show, just like American government can narrate our media, it's the same exact principles. Like, so they can either put a positive light on you or a negative light. We took the negative light and, and smiled and went with it. And, you know, we're very appreciative of, you know, good press, negative press, whatever. Because at the end of the day, now we have a bigger, you know, reach to talk about Alex Jones and, you know, the New World Order takeover. So You were telling me during the break, though, about. that your life uh, has, has, has really changed. Uh, can you uh, say that in your own words for the audience? But, it, but uh, really ch challenge young people to spread the word about the New World Order takeover that we're in the middle of? I mean, uh, it's beyond a life change. Like when I said you uh, gave me the Matrix pill, you know, I really feel like I'm out of the Matrix and we're driving around in that little, little spaceship in the sewers and you're, you're at the helm because, I mean, what young people need to realize, what I didn't realize, is that video games and all these silly blogs, which is, you know, no substance, just... You know, just evil. You know, all blogs are just making fun of people, you know, breaking people down, you know, getting the right comments. You know, it's just like the, the bathroom wall, you know, on the Internet. And for, for me, just yesterday, I'm 25 years old, and it took me, you know, yesterday to delete on my bookmarks on my iPhone and my computer all these news websites that feed me, you know, just popcorn news and all my blogs that, you know, about Hollywood and the music industry, all this stuff that has no meaning in our lives right now. When the Exactly. They want to get you they want to get you drunk on petty issues like that story from Yahoo News. The the cover charge at this club, an RFID implant. And it says, take the chips. You don't have to worry about money, worry about nothing. Just party and have a good time. It says to take a burden off of you. 
to free customers of the burdens of having to carry their purses and wallets. But really, you're being enslaved to a chip to track and trace everything you do to bring you into this electronic straitjacket, this this electronic prison or plantation or neo surf uh, uh, feudalist system. And it's sold as if it's so good. And then the girls and the boys and the teenagers, the young people are all so insecure because they don't look like a Heidi or they don't look like a Spencer. That then makes them insecure. So the establishment can come in and then sell them the products and then make them never feel like empowered entities or creatures alive one time on this planet as a test by God to see where they go in the future. I think it's very exciting that you guys is you know these big pop culture icons are now having this metamorphosis to the new world order. Is it fair to say you guys have woken up then to the matrix and the new world order? That would be an understatement. We've definitely woken up to what's going on and to the new world order and to a real matrix that there is in the world. It's not just conspiracies. It's nothing to do with that. That's a word that they've created to make people sound crazy. It's like you only sound crazy if you don't believe what everyone believes, if you're not a sheep. But that's not what God says. And now that people are trying to play God on this earth, it's very scary. And I pray for their souls because there's a lot more than this life. And do not mess with God or his people because there will be punishment for it. And this is a very scary thing. And chips are disgusting. I keep hearing this, and I can't even believe it. And they've done such a good job at making computers seem cool, and you need the new technology, the new anything at any cost. That is such a lie. That is so disgusting. It's in- we're incriminating ourselves by laziness, and it's, it's very sad. And I really pray for America and that everybody wakes up because this chip is the end of humanity. Well, I will tell you what what happened is old Hollywood, the really big stars, they're all awake to this. And I know a lot of these people and a lot of them have, have, have reached out to me publicly, but most of them off record. And they're totally aware of the technological control grid. They're totally aware of the vaccines and the fluoride and the new world order. They're totally freaked out just trying to do their movies to make money so they can you know, live outside the country or live in an armored compound. They're not into fame anymore. They're totally freaked out, but just playing along with the system. Then there's kind of the new Hollywood super hype that just bypasses movies and films and just moves right to these kind of pop creations like you guys. But to have you kind of at the front lines of the Matrix system taking over people's brains, to have you breaking out of the Matrix all because one of your music uh, uh, managers or friends showed you the Obama deception, and then that led you down deeper into the rabbit hole uh, is just so incredibly exciting. Now, in the last few months since you started waking up to this, have you seen the media come after you even more? Because folks in my office that are aware of what's happening, they say it seems the last few months the media has even been savaging you that much more. I feel like they're just getting angrier and angrier, but I feel like the world is just getting angrier and angrier. I don't even think it's necessarily that. They want to come harder after us to distract people even more from what's going on in their own lives. So they're not thinking, oh, wow, I'm in debt. The government's taking over. What are we going to do? They're thinking, oh, well, Heidi and Spencer are blah, blah, blah. That, that is so sad to me. Absolutely. I see people cheating each other more. I see the public lying. I see infighting. I see government getting more corrupt. It, it, it really is like the fall of Rome. Everything is accelerating towards this collapse. And they mean to build on those ashes this world government, which its plan stated in my film, Endgame Blueprint for Global Enslavement, on record, is to kill at least 80% of us. And I'm sorry, folks, that's more important than if your Botox is working. That's more important than Michael Jackson is the lion state for all his fans at the Neverland uh, pervert ranch. It's more important that Barack Obama is running a pimp game of lying to everybody about everything he said he would do uh, than whether or not Anna Nicole Smith was murdered. What do you guys say to that? I mean, what really hit me is when you started you know, un- you know, know, uncovering all the evidence of how you know, Obama's just all tied in to all of these energy companies. And it's just like Bush and his whole crew, they're all about the oil. But America 
when they were ready to revolutionize and get, you know, really make a stand, you know, just they threw in Obama, and now he's, oh, oil's bad. Oh, you're totally right. Everybody was done with oil, but I, I got this new hustle over here, which is energy, that I, I, I'm sure you don't realize that I have a piece of. You know, let's push this on to everybody. Exactly. For those that don't know, Obama owns stock in two of the mercantile energy trading companies with Al Gore. That's now mainstream news. We told people about it in the Obama deception, but it's now mainstream news. We saw the federal filings. And uh, Al Gore is the majority owner of Occidental Petroleum, one of the biggest oil companies in the world. And what it is is artificial scarcity. They're just creating a monopoly where they're going to charge you more for regular energy and restrict the amount of energy you get. Well, I've been asking questions here for you know, 25, 30 minutes. You guys get into whatever subjects you want to discuss. Uh, what about government-sponsored terror? What about 9-11?